A question that we get asked all the time is should I be purchasing an unrenovated property or should I be going for a tenant ready property? Both of them have their pros and cons and in today's video I'm going to unravel a few of them and talk a bit about the difference between your unrenovated property versus a tenant ready property. <music> G'day, I'm Simon from Pumped On Property. Thanks so much for tuning in. And if you haven't already done so, please click the subscribe link below and follow our YouTube channel. If you do have any questions or if you do have any comments, please leave them in the comments section below. Before you even start thinking about purchasing an unrenovated property versus a tenant ready property, there's so many things that you need to make sure that you've got a perfect understanding of before really getting to that granular level stuff. So. We always say that you need to be focusing on the big picture, the underlying strategy, like why are you investing in property? What are you hoping to achieve from your property investments? What market are you going to be focusing in? What suburbs am I going to be looking at? What? And then once you finally get to the fifth point, what style of property do I need to be purchasing in order to achieve my property investment goals? So there's so many different strategies out there. There's so many different ways to achieve financial freedom. You really need to understand the big picture as to exactly why you're doing this and exactly what am I trying to achieve through property investing and then work your way down to this level. A lot of people get stuck in those cosmetic things or the small things when they start property investing, they look at the entire Australian property market instead of focusing on a very specific couple of suburbs. They look at brand new properties, they look at units, they look at townhouses, they look at unrenovated, they look at renovated, and it's so much going on in your mind. There's so many things to consider, and it gets so noisy and so overwhelming when you don't have a very specific strategy. So before really even figuring out what type of property is right for you, you need to figure out that big picture strategy. You know, once you get to that point where you understand your strategy, you know the market that you're going to be focusing on, you know the suburbs that you're in, and now it's time to consider the differences between the types of properties that you should be focusing on. That's when we start to unwrap this. So when it comes to investing, you know, I think there's two different styles of investors. You've got your active investors and you've also got your passive investors. Now, your active investors are people that are looking for this unrenovated product. They want to get involved with the property. They want to manufacture their own value. They want to take matters into their own hands where your passive investor is somebody who's more of a set and forget, which both are fine guys. It doesn't matter if you want to be more active or if you want to be more passive. You know, if you're a passive investor that's just investing for the future, you know, you've got a good business or you've got a good job that you really enjoy doing and you know, you're just purchasing these properties to set yourself up for the future and acquire that insurance policy or generate that passive income. That's completely fine. But you know, this is a passion of mine and I really enjoy getting involved with that property and taking matters into my own hands. So I kind of consider myself a bit more of an active investor. So, you know, either or, it doesn't necessarily matter which one you are, but just know if you are going for an active investor, if you are going for those properties that need a little bit of work, you gotta understand that it is a bit of work and you need to really get involved. And uh, if you don't have the time, then maybe focusing on more of a passive strategy is going to work for you. So. Ask yourself that question, do I have the time to get involved with this property? Should I really be focusing on a project right now or should I be spending time focusing on something else? Now, some of the major benefits that I love about an unrenovated property for those active inv investors out there is the fact that they're more often than not much cheaper than the market average. So if you're looking at the median price in the suburb, with an unrenovated property, maybe you're gonna be able to pick something up below market value or a little bit cheaper than the market average, which is great. It means you're keeping a little bit of money in your pocket on the way in, but you need to spend some money to get it up to market standard and get it above that median value. So, you know, the fact that it is a little bit cheaper, a little bit more affordable, easier to get into the market can be a huge benefit. What else is, is great about unrenovated properties is the fact that you can add value, you can manufacture value to those properties and that can come in many different ways. Um, you can look at 
just a cosmetic renovation where you get into the property, you know, you may give it a paint, you may change the window coverings, you may upgrade the flooring by either replacing the carpet or ripping the carpet up to polish the timber floorboards beneath. You may even want to put some tiling down, put some floating flooring down. You know, there's so many different ways. You know, other cosmetic things like changing the light fittings to modernize, getting some nice fans in there, sprucing up the property a little bit and making it look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing from what it used to be. You know, you could go a little bit further than that and do a bit more of a structural renovation and something that's really popular up here in Queensland because most of the houses are high set, they're on stumps, they've been raised. What you could potentially do is raise that up to legal height and build in underneath to add additional bedrooms, bathrooms or living space. Um, you can also add extensions onto the property, maybe add another bedroom and bathroom. You may not even have to go into that much detail and you may just need to reconfigure the floor plan, uh, which can be an awesome opportunity. You know, with my, my mother's house actually, a great example here, she's an active investor herself and she purchased a three bedroom, one bathroom house completely gutted the thing and converted into a four bed, two bathroom house under the exact same roof line. So, you know, there's always that opportunity as well, just making the space that you have a little bit more functional. So, so many ways to add value to that property, but you need to make sure that you are got the right team around you to successfully do this because what we find is a lot of people come into this strategy for an unrenovated property not understanding the cost and not understanding the logistics of successfully manufacturing value to that property. So you want to understand the costs involved when you purchase an unrenovated property and you're looking to add value. One of the other main points about purchasing unrenovated properties, which I love personally, is the fact that you don't have as much competition to deal with in the market. Uh, most people like something that looks good. I know I like things that look good sometimes. I think you probably like things that look good. Um, and you know, most of the time we'd prefer to get that. But when you're purchasing an asset that's hundreds of thousands of dollars, sometimes you may not be able to afford that asset that's going to cost a lot of money and that looks really good. So getting into a property that looks quite tired and then doing the work yourself can be a great way and sometimes you're not going to deal with as much competition with as many buyers because they don't they may not want to look at that it may not be a part of their strategy um, owner occupiers especially generally don't like unrenovated properties just a very small percentage would actually want to do something like that so you know that's a major benefit to not be dealing with so many buyers which sometimes can allow you to purchase that property for even cheaper so you've got a lot of pros coming with an unrenovated property you know you're purchasing it for a more affordable price you're not dealing with as many buyers and there is potential uplift there from equity by doing some sort of cosmetic or structural renovation you know there are some cons there though as well generally with an unrenovated property it is going to be a little bit older so there may be some of those ongoing maintenance issues that can cause a bit of a problem um, you know, generally you're not going to find a quality tenant in the short term if you're not doing that renovation immediately. So you're not gonna be getting a stronger rent return from that property because it doesn't look as good. You're not attracting those high quality tenants, those owner occupiers or young families or stronger demographics because you are purchasing a property that's on the lower end of the spectrum in that particular suburb. But then knowing that you can add that value and then go out and find those high quality demographics, those high quality tenants. So, you know, there are a few things to balance there. Now, if you're sitting there and going, bloody hell, I do not want to do that much work. I just want to purchase a property, you know, focus on what I'm doing in my life right now and let the market do its thing. Then, you know, you may be a bit more of a passive investor. You may want to be focusing on a tenant ready property, which has just as many pros as an unrenovated property. You know, generally there is a bit more competition when you are purchasing that and generally they're going to be a bit more expensive. So, you know, you do have a bit more to battle with on the way in for that particular property. But the great thing about tenant ready properties is generally you're gonna get a higher rent. You're probably gonna get more appealing tenants. You're gonna get those quality demographics. You're gonna get 
um, those primo tenants, which you know essentially can be really good. You don't not going to have those ongoing issues. Um, what I love about it as well is it's ready from day one. You know, you're not going to have massive vacancy periods like you potentially can with an unrenovated property because it's ready to go. You can put it on the market as soon as you've settled and get some people in there really fast, which can allow you to have lower vacancy rates over the longer term. You know, with an unrenovated property, you've got to remember that while you're doing those renovations, you're not going to have anybody in that property, but you still have to pay for the mortgage. So a tenant ready property means not as many maintenance issues, much less vacancy periods, and you can start paying off the debt from day one on that particular property. The great thing about a tenant ready property as well is, you know, you can get this asset now, not worry about it, set and forget the property, but then in 10 or 15 years time when you may have a bit more experience investing you may have a better team around you um, that property has obviously been rented out for that period of time you may be able to then come in and do a bit of a renovation and manufacture some value to the property so even with a tenant ready property there's always the upside potential in the future to manufacture a little bit of value yourself but in the short term, you don't necessarily have to worry about too much. You can just get that property rented out. I think the major question that you need to ask yourself when it comes to unrenovated and tenant ready is, am I a passive investor or am I an active investor right now? Um, you know, understanding the strategy, understanding what you need from that property is so important. And also understanding which stage of the market that we're in, which stage of the property cycle are we sitting in? Because you know, when you've got a property market that's rising by five to 10% per year and things are going crazy, there's buyers everywhere, there's properties everywhere, you know, you can purchase an unrenovated property and put some work into it, manufacture some value and know that there's gonna be another person out there that's gonna pay a premium for it in the future and you may have the opportunity to flip it. But Sometimes when the market's sitting really flat and there's not too many buyers in the market, there's not too many properties on the market either, you know, it can be difficult to purchase an unrenovated property and manufacture that value for the short term. So you've really got to understand your strategy. You've really got to understand the market cycles. You've got to understand what that particular property or what that particular investment investment needs to be doing for you. And once you've dotted all those I's and crossed all those T's, you know, and you're ready to start purchasing those properties, you should understand exactly what you need. So thanks so much for tuning in today, guys. I hope you got a bit of value out of this one. If you do have any comments, please leave them below. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We've also got a podcast over on Apple and Spotify called The Pumped On Property Show. So if you want to get some other insights, jump over there, have a listen. But until next time, thanks for listening.